I want to. Be a teacher. Be a footballer. Buy a house. No matter where the child is, what conditions they are in, or what challenges they face, they all have dreams. Make their dreams a reality by providing them with food, education and the support they need. Invest in the generation of tomorrow, today. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أحصى كل شيء عددا ورفع بعض خلقه على بعض فكانوا طرائق قددا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولا يكون أبدا ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أكرم به عبدا سيدا وأعظم به حبيبا مؤيدا فما أزكاه أصلا ومحتدا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه صلاة دائمة وسلاما مؤبدا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكلا نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك وجاءك في هذه الحق وموعظة وذكرى للمؤمنين صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to our dear brothers and sisters in the UK may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all ease, goodness, afia and protect you all from every type of adversity and difficulty insha'Allah the ummah is going through very challenging times and I, sh- I thought I share with you the life of one of the great individuals in Islamic history and the reason behind this is the verse that I have recited before you, Allah Rabbul Izza addressing Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ O Nabi of Allah, we narrate to you the tales of the previous prophets that it may serve as a means of strength to your heart. So when you're going through challenging times, Uh, We read the tales and the incidents and the stories and the lives and the biographies of these great people and inshallah it will serve as a motivation for us and it will grant strength to our hearts. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. That is why the scholars tell us Tanzilu rahmatu inda dhikri salihin Making mention of the pious people attracts the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And coupled with that we will find our navigation and our guidance through the lives of the pious predecessors. Imam Malik rahimahullah's famous quotation, he said the latter part of this ummah will not find its glory and its prosperity except through the avenues which was adopted by the early people of the ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I briefly wish to share with you the life of Sayyiduna Urwa ibn Zubair rahimahullahu ta'ala. Urwa bin Zubair, he is the son of Sayyiduna Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiyallahu anhu. Abdul Malik bin Marwan said, Man sarrahu an yanzura ila rajulim min ahli al-jannah fal yanzur ila Urwa ibn Zubair. Anyone that wants to see a person from amongst the dwellers of Jannah walking on the planet Earth, let him look at Urwa bin Zubair, rahimahullahu ta'ala. And you will find as we go along with the life of Sayyiduna Urwa bin Zubair, rahimahullah, it serves as such a great motivation for us in these challenging times, and it's the perfect inspiration that we all need. So multiple aspects we will look at in his noble life, insha'Allah, that will be a means of guidance and navigation for us in these challenging times. Number one, Urwa bin Zubair rahimahullah had a passion and a focus of akhirah and achieving the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, he himself said, Umniyati, my desire and my passion is an akuna aliman amila, that I become a practicing scholar. 
يأخذ الناس عني كتاب ربهم وأحكام دينهم وأن أفوز في الآخرة برضا الله وأحظى بجنته My passion is to devote my life to the sciences of Islam, study our beautiful deen, and then share this beautiful deen with the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I myself will benefit from that knowledge, and my dua is Allah use me as a tool and a means of guidance for others. And subhanallah, his passion was that I do this exclusively to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for any type of fame, not for any type of recognition. My only passion for this is that I come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Food for thought for us, many of us, alhamdulillah, are doing some type of service for the ummah at this time. We should uh, ensure that our intentions are to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively. What was his intention through this? A life of piety so that I can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to get the credit and recognition of people. Bishr al-Hafi rahimahullah who was a great scholar. He passed away in the year 227 Hijri and he was born in the year 152 Hijri. He studied under great scholars, the likes of Imam Malik, uh, Fudail bin Iyad, Abdullah bin Mubarak, Sufyan bin Uyayna and others. He said that uh, that person that is searching for recognition and fame amongst people cannot have taqwa. Taqwa and desire for fame do not go together. So our passion should be whatever little good we do, we're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why in Arabic they say very beautifully, رِضَ النَّاسِ غَايَةٌ لَا تُدْرَكْ وَرِضَ اللَّهِ غَايَةٌ لَا تُدْرَكْ um, Seeking the pleasure of people is something that can never be achieved. And seeking the pleasure of Allah is something that can never be abandoned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ikhlas inshallah. So in order to fulfill this passion of his, he devoted his life, uh, specifically the early part of his youth, to acquiring Islamic knowledge. Akabba ala talab al-ilmi wa anqata alahu wa aghtanam al-baqiyyata al-baqiyyata min sahabati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, he spent lots of time in the company of very senior sahaba, the likes of uh, Ali bin Abi Talib, Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Zaid bin Thabit, Abu Ayyub al Ansari, Usama bin Zaid, Saeed bin Zaid, Abu Huraira, Abdullah bin Abbas, Nu'man bin Bashir, and many other Sahaba. In fact, a great chunk of his knowledge he received from his maternal aunt, Sayyidatuna Aisha radiyallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen. May Allah be pleased with her. So his lineage is also a very lofty lineage. Who is Urwa bin Zubair, who we are discussing today? Abu who was Zubair ibn al-Awwam, Hawariyu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His father is the great giant uh, Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiyallahu anhu. His mother is Al-Asma'u Asma bintu Abi Bakrin, Al-Mulaqabatu bithati nitaqayn. Asma radiyallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, and she has the good privilege of preparing food for the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, when you have a big sporting event, then you have the official partners of that event. So official timekeeper and official this sponsor and official that sponsor. Subhanallah, Asma officially prepared the food for the, for the hijrah of Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his father is Zubair radiyallahu anhu, his mother is Asma bintu Abi Bakrin, وَجَدُّهُ لِأُمِّهِ هُوَ أَبُو بَكْرِنِ الصِّدِّيقِ خَلِيفَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. His maternal grandfather is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, and وَجَدَّتُهُ لِأَبِيهِ His paternal grandmother is Sayyiduna Safiya radiyallahu anha, وَخَالَتُهُ هِيَ أُمُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَائِشَةُ رَضِيَ anha. His maternal aunt is Sayyidatuna Aisha radiyallahu anha. فَلَقَدْ نَزَلَ إِلَىٰ قَبْرِهَا حِينَ دُفِنَتْ He was amongst the people that were part of the burial process of our beloved mother Aisha radiyallahu anha. Anyway, uh, he devoted himself to acquiring Islamic knowledge and he became one of the very great fuqaha of Medina. And... Uh, Medina at that time had seven very great recognized fuqaha and amongst them is 
عروة بن زبير رحمه الله ألا كل من لا يقتدي بأئمتي فقسمته ضيزا عن الحق خارجا فخذهم عبيد الله عروة قاسمو Uh, they were seven great fuqaha of Medina Munawwara. That is why the great Khalifa Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahimahullah, when he came to Medina Munawwara, um, then he would gather these fuqaha, and the leader of these fuqaha, the Amir of them would be Urwa bin Zubayr rahimahullah. And Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahimahullah would show great respect uh towards urwa bin zubair falamma saru indahu rahhaba bihim wa akrama majalisahum and then he would seek the guidance and the counsel of urwa bin zubair and the senior scholars that were with him urwa bin zubair rahimahullah was a very knowledgeable individual and coupled with that he was a very practicing individual so again a lesson for us the little knowledge that we have, it's imperative we try and bring it into practice, insha'Allah. Now, we, we, we discuss now, uh, we get to the key part of his life. We get to the key part of his life. Remember, we're not speaking of his practice in Ramadan. We're speaking of his life. We're speaking of his life. فَقَدْ كَانَ صَوَّامًا فِي الْهَوَاجِرِ قَوَّامًا فِي الْعَتَمَاتِ رَطْبَ اللِّسَانِ دَائِمًا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى he, would, he was one that would fast excessively and he would fast specifically in the hot days and he would perform long records of nocturnal prayer by night Ratuba lisani daiman bidhikrillah his tongue was always moist in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kana ila dhalika khadeenan li kitab allahi azza wa jal he had a great passion and commitment and dedication towards the Quran not only in Ramadan, throughout the year. Whilst we are reading our Quran in the month of Ramadan, let us make some resolution that we will continue with the recitation of the Quran throughout the year, inshallah. I came across a very profound quotation the other day in Arabic. It basically said that the Quran does not need our time. القرآن لا يحتاج إلى أوقاتنا بل أوقاتنا تحتاج إلى القرآن Our time needs the Quran The Quran does not need our time وكان إلى ذلك خدينا لكتاب الله عز وجل He had a great passion for the Quran He had a great bond and connection with the Quran عاكفا على تلاوته what was the extent of his bond with the Quran? فَكَانَ يَقْرَأُ رُبْعَ الْقُرْآنِ كُلَّ نَهَارٍ نَظَرًا فِي الْمُصْحَفِ ثُمَّ يَقُومُ بِهِ اللَّيْلِ تِلَاوَةً عَنْ ظَهْرِ قَلْبٍ So his practice was, he would recite a quarter of the Quran by day whilst looking in the Quran. And at night he would recite that same quarter of the Quran. When we say quarter, not quarter Jews, quarter of the entire Quran. So seven and a half Jews looking inside the Quran by day and seven and a half Jews in Salah by night. So you're talking of 15 Jews a day, even though it was the same seven and a half Jews recited by day and by night. But in terms of quantity, it's 15 Jews a day. Subhanallah. And this was not Ramadan. This was his whole life. وَلَمْ يُعْرَفْ مِنْهُ أَنَّهُ تَرَكَ ذَلِكَ مُنْذُ صَدْرِ شَبَابِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ وَفَاتِهِ غَيْرَ مَرَّةٍ وَاحِدَةٍ لِخَطْبٍ نَزَلَ بِهِ And his bond with the Qur'an was so profound that this remained his, pra- remained his practice. For his entire life, he would read 15 Jews of the Qur'an daily. This was not for one day or two days, one month or two months one year or two years, this remained his practice from his youth till the day he passed on. Only one day he was unable to read these 15 Jews of the Quran and we'll come to that inshallah. So we discussed the importance of having the passion to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We briefly discussed commitment to the Quran. Allah make us from amongst the people of the Quran. Allah make us from amongst the people of the Quran. Number three, وَقَدْ كَانَ عُرْوَةُ بْنُ الزُّبَيْرِ رِضْوَانُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ سَخِيَّ الْيَدِ سَمْحًا جَوَادًا He was very, very generous. 
He was very gentle. What a beautiful combination this amazing life is of Urwa bin Zubair. وَمِمَّا أُثِرَ عَنْ جُودِهِ أَنَّهُ كَانَ لَهُ بُسْتَانٌ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ بَسَاتِينِ الْمَدِينَةِ عَذْبُ الْمِيَاهِ ظَلِيلُ الْأَشْجَارِ بَاسِقُ النَّخِيلِ He had a garden that had the very very sweet fruits. And وَكَانَ يُسَوِّرُ بُسْتَانَهُ طَوَالَ الْعَامِ لِحِمَايَةِ أَشْجَارِهِ مِنْ أَذَى الْمَاشِيَةِ وَعَبَثِ الصَّبِيَةِ حتى إذا آن أوان الرطب وأينعت الثمار وطابت واشتهتها النفوس كسر حائط بستانه في أكثر من جهة ليجيز للناس دخوله. So he would obviously put a wall around his garden to protect it uh, from anything harmful. But when the season came of harvesting and benefiting from that fruit, he would then break that wall and give permission to the public to come and consume from the beautiful sweet fruit of his garden as much as they please. Clearly that's mentioned. Whatever they want to eat, they had full permission. Whatever they want to take with them home, they had full permission. وَكَانَ كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ بُسْتَانَهُ هَذَا رَدَّدَ قَوْلَهُ جَلَّ وَعَزْ And every time he entered his garden, he would recite the verse. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهُ Remember, this is the favor of Allah. Remember, this is the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a third lesson for us. We discussed the importance of having sincerity, having a bond with the Quran. And now a third lesson of generosity. Generosity leads a person to various goods. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a generous hand. When the people on the day of Qiyamah will see the rewards of generosity and they will ask Allah to come back to this world. Subhanallah, look at the verse of the Quran. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْلَا أَخَّرُتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ When a person will see death and then he will ask Allah to give a bit of respite and chance and in Qiyamah he will ask send me back so that I can practice some. What does he say? What does he want to do when he comes back to this world? He said, Allah send me back so I can give some charity. Allah send me back so I can feed a hungry soul. And the only reason they are asking to come back and specifically practice charity is because of the great rewards of charity they've seen in Akhirah. So this is a time of stress uh, for many individuals. Um, financial stress, financial difficulty. Let us inshallah try and contribute whatever we can to these noble causes of feeding others and taking care of others. MashaAllah, Allah Ta'ala reward Sheikh Zahir and um, his entire Sufa team for the wonderful efforts they're doing in assisting others. Uh, let us inshallah contribute towards this and inshallah we will be rewarded greatly. Right, next. وَفِي ذَاتِ سَنَةٍ مِنْ خِلَافَةِ الْوَلِيدِ بْنِ عَبْدِ الْمَلِكِ So this was the life of Urwa bin Zubair. It was a life brimming with piety. Uh, during the Khilafah of Walid bin Abdul Malik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Urwa bin Zubair rahimahullah with a severe test. What was the test? لا يثبت له إلا ذو الأفئدة التي عمرها الإيمان وأترعها اليقين. A very intense test uh, that is not easy for any person to withstand. So the Khalifa of the Muslimin Urwa bin, uh, invited Urwa bin Zubair to visit him in Damascus. Urwa bin Zubair accepted the invitation and uh, he took along with him his eldest son when uh, urwa bin zubair came to the khalifa the khalifa welcomed him and made every effort to give him a comfortable stay and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested urwa bin zubair rahimahullah in the following way ذلك ان urwa ibn zubair dakhala ala istabal al-walid دخل على إصطبل الوليد ليتفرج على جياده الصافنات فرمحته دبة رمحة رمحة قاضية أودت بحياتهم. So he went to see the horses of the Khalifa 
and one of the horses kicked Urwa bin Zubair and this kick proved to be uh, sorry my apologies the son of Urwa bin Zubair rahimahullah went to see the horses and one of the horses then kicked the son of Urwa bin Zubair and this kick proved to be fatal and it claimed the life of the son of Urwa bin Zubair uh, those of us that have lost family members, dear ones, close ones through the COVID-19. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease and sabr to the family. And may Allah ta'ala grant the marhum in Jannatul Firdaus, inshaAllah. So Urwa bin Zubayr loses his son. And then, وَلَمْ يَكَدِ الْأَبُ الْمَفْجُوعُ يَنْفُضُ يَدَيْهِ مِنْ تُرَابِ قَبْرِ وَلَدِهِ The historians write, Urwa bin Zubayr was literally... Um, rubbing his hands with the dust and sand of the grave of his son and he was cleaning that sand off before he could wipe off the sand of the grave of his son from his hands he developed an abscess on his foot and this then started spreading so it now obviously started spreading and it was a great uh, cause of concern so the Khalifa immediately summoned various physicians and uh, they came to see Urwa bin Zubayr rahimahullah and after examining him and carrying out the necessary test they decided the only way to go ahead is they need to amputate the leg of Urwa bin Zubayr because this is cancerous and it could spread throughout the body and then it could eventually claim his life so they came and informed him with the sad news that the physicians have decided we will need to amputate your leg. And one of them came and told him, Ara an min muskirin la tash'uram, la tash'ura bil alam. Listen, we're going to give you a tot of alcohol to sedate you so that you do not feel the pain. Arwa bin Zubair said, La astainu bi haramin ala ma arjuhu min al afiyah. I am asking Allah for afiyah and cure. I will not adopt a haram means for this cure. Now he was a great faqih. You can't say he did not know the mas'ala and the concession and the permissibility of using this for medical purposes. Subhanallah, look at his piety. And obviously, this is not uh, for the ordinary people, these were the friends of Allah. They said, إِذَا نُسْقِيَ كَالْمُخَدِّرِ Okay, not alcohol, we'll give you something else to sedate you so that uh, you are unconscious when we carry out the operation. So Urwa said, مَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أُسْلَبَ عُضْوًا مِنْ أَعْضَائِي دُونَ أَنْ أَشْعُرَ بِأَلَمِهِ وَأَحْتَسِبْ ذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Listen, I do not want my leg to be amputated while I am unconscious. I want to be conscious and I want to be part of the process so that I can claim the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Look at the passion for reward. And then uh, some people came to him just before the operation was carried out. They said, no, Urwa, let them give you something to sedate you. He said, no, no. Akfikum bi dhikri wa tasbih. I will take the name of Allah and that will suffice for him. And then the operation was carried out. And then uh, because of that, uh, he fell unconscious. And during this entire period, he continued uh, reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. Anyway, after the procedure was completed, he fell unconscious. And this lasted for a long time. And it basically stayed with him for an entire day. And this was the day in his life that he was unable to recite seven and a half Jews in the day and seven and a half Jews at night. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What a passion and commitment to Quran. منذ صدر شبابه and this was the only time that he was unable to recite those 15 Jews of the Quran anyway my, 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 I, I was asked to speak for I think 20 minutes I'm going to try and wrap it up now inshallah 
So after the procedure was completed, he gained his consciousness. He asked, can my leg be brought to me? The leg of Urwa bin Zubair was then carried to him and he held it very fondly. And he said the following profound words. أَمَا وَالَّذِي حَمَلَنِي عَلَيْكِ فِي عَتَمَاتِ اللَّيْلِ إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ إِنَّهُ لَيَعْلَمُ أَنَّنِي مَا مَشَيْتُ بِكِ إِلَى حَرَامٍ قَطُّ O oh my Allah, that had blessed me with this great bounty of this leg. O oh my Allah, you know very well, never ever have I put my weight on this leg and walked towards haram. Allah, you know this leg took me to the masjid in the dark hours of the night. And then he recited few couplets of Ma'an bin Aus. Uh, he said, Oh my Allah, you know very well these hands of mine have not touched haram. Allah, you know very well my leg never took me to haram. Allah, you know my heart never entertained thoughts of haram. Allah, consciously I never planned to do any haram. And I know very well any difficulty that befalls me, it is insignificant to compared to the difficulties that came upon the previous people. Subhanallah, my message from this is, despite the most challenging time of his life, look at the contentment that Allah has given him. And that's not all. When he returns home to his people, how is he coming? He is coming. He went with his son. He's returning without his son. He went when he was healthy. Now he is returning when his one leg has been amputated. He addresses the people and tells them, لا يهولنكم ما ترون Listen, don't jump to conclusions. Do not make any comments. Allah has been extremely kind to me. Look at the contentment that Allah gives to the people of piety. We're going through challenging times. Our only solution to find the contentment of our heart is we turn to Allah. That's the promise of the Quran that will never fail us. He then told them, فَلَقَدْ وَهَبَنِي اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الْبَنِينَ ثُمَّ أَخَذَ مِنْهُمْ وَاحِدًا وَأَبْقَى لِي ثَلَاثَةً Listen, Allah gave me four sons. Allah has only taken one back. Allah gave me two hands and two legs. ثُمَّ أَخَذَ مِنْهَا وَاحِدًا وَأَبْقَى لِي ثَلَاثَةً فَلَهُ الْحَمْدِ وَأَيْمُ اللَّهُ لَإِنْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِنِّي قَلِيلًا فَلَقَدْ أَبْقَى لِي كَثِيرًا Listen, if Allah has tested me once, Allah has been extremely kind to me more than once. So occasionally I'm suffering from a challenge or a difficulty, but by and large Allah is showering his favors upon me. Look at the positive outlook, look at the positive approach, and look at the divine contentment and solace that Allah gives his pious bondsmen. Again, a lesson for us. Let us not reflect only on the difficulties that we are facing. Let us look at the positives. Let us look at the many favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then uh, one person by the name of Ibrahim bin Muhammad bin Talha consoled him with very beautiful words. And he said, Abshir ya Aba Abdillah, faqad sabaqaka udwum min a'daik, wa waladum min abnaika ila al jannah, wal kullu yatba'u al ba'da insha'Allah. Listen, Urwa, my message of condolences to you is as follows. Uh, glad tidings to you. Allah make it that we enter Jannah. Inshallah, when you get to Jannah, your leg and your son will be waiting to receive you. Subhanallah. Uh, there were some other quotations of Urwa bin Zubayr rahimahullah that I wanted to share with you as well. But uh, because of time, we'll just end now, inshallah. And uh, I'll just give you a glimpse of the final moments of his noble life. So in Urdu, there's a very beautiful saying. They say, Zindagi guzaro Ramzan kitara. Zindagi guzaro Ramzan kitara. 
मौत आएगी ईद के चांद की तरह लव योर लाइफ लाइक हाउ यू लव ड्यूरिंग द मंथ ऑफ रमदान यू विल रिसीव द एंजल ऑफ डेथ with the very same joy that you receive the crescent of eid so how happy you are when it's the time of eid that is how happy you will be to receive uh, the angel of death and that's precisely what was the case in the life of urwa bin zubair rahimahullah he passed away at the age of 71 now imagine from the age of 14 till 71 15 juz of the Quran daily ya rab ya rab what a rich legacy and then we mentioned he was a person that fasted regularly falamma ja'ahu al-ajal al-mahtum adrakahu wa huwa sa'im so his death came to him also at a time when he was fasting wa laqad alaha alayhi ahluhu an yuftira fa aba his family insisted you need to break your fast you are not well he said no Today I am hopeful my iftar will be in Jannah. Today I am hopeful my iftar will be in Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala uh, give us the ability to take heed and lesson from the many rich lessons of this great legacy uh, from the life of Urwa bin Zubair rahimahullahu ta'ala. We spoke about the importance of ikhlas and sincerity. We spoke about commitment to the Quran. We spoke about being charitable and contributing to good causes. and we also spoke about sabr in times of difficulty and how allah gives contentment to people of piety despite the challenges and finally what a wonderful mot and death allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed urwa bin zubair rahimahullah wa please keep us in your duas inshallah mashallah the people of uk uh, keeping rather long hours of fast allah reward you abundantly allah accept your fast inshallah and please keep me in your duas specifically at the time of tahajjud and the, at, at the time of iftar barakallahu fikum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh kum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i want to be a teacher be a footballer ehta gari loitam buy a house No matter where the child is, what conditions they are in, or what challenges they face, they all have dreams. Make their dreams a reality by providing them with food, education, and the support they need. Invest in the generation of tomorrow today.